Adventures in Coffee. So I've read about the difference between Arabica and Robusta coffee. And most of the coffee that you get that is considered high quality is going to be Arabica, Arabica coffee. And the, uh, there, there's kind of this stereotype against Robusta coffee uh, as being kind of cheap or lower quality. It's used as a filler uh, in sort of cheaper coffees and so forth. Uh, basically the Robusta, which I think the proper name is Can Canifera, Canifora, uh, it's a species of plant that's different than the Arabica that you're used to uh, knowing about. Uh, and it's called Robusta because it is a more robust coffee. It can be grown at lower altitudes than Arabica. It's less peaky in terms of its climate. Uh, it has a higher yield. Uh, it has a higher caffeine content, about twice as high uh, in terms of the caffeine. And for this reason, it's thought to be uh, much more resistant to pests uh, and to, I guess, various leaf rot diseases and stuff like that. But like I said, it's acquired this reputation as kind of being a cheap, inferior product. Um, but I have seen people who say that this is an undeserved reputation that Robusta Coffee deserves uh, another look. So I kept getting these ads on my Facebook feed from these guys, the Gwen, Gwen, Nguyen uh, Coffee Roasters, Coffee Supply, uh, based in Brooklyn. Uh, and they are Vietnamese coffee, hence the name. Uh, and they have different blends. They have uh, Arabica, um, but they also had a, a Robusta. So I decided to get their Robusta uh, and give it a try. So this is their True Grit, 100% Peaberry Robusta. Uh, and I'm curious, uh, supposedly Robustas are a lot less acidic, so if uh, acidity is a problem for you, then Robusta might be a, a nice uh, direction for you. Um, but supposedly they're also a lot more bitter. Uh, and like I said, the, uh, there's kind of a reputation of being, having kind of a woody taste, uh, rubbery, something that's just not pleasant. Um, but again, that reputation might not be deserved. So this coffee right here is apparently sourced uh, straight from Vietnam uh, through, I guess, a local grower there. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna get into in a future video the importance of having a having sourced coffee beans, uh, as James Hoffman indicates uh, in his book, and how that's a, a marker of quality, basically. So I figure um, if anything gives a fair shot to Robusta coffee beans, it would be this stuff. So uh, I, I, I caved to the Facebook ads I kept getting uh, and I ordered this stuff. Uh, I'm not sponsored by these guys. I don't I had to pay for it. Uh, so I don't necessarily have a bias one way or the other. Uh, and just to give it a, a thoroughly fair uh, weighing, I'm going to brew it on the siphon brewer and we're gonna see what it tastes like. So here's what the beans look like. They're uh, kind of a bit odd looking. They they definitely look different. They look kind of bigger. The smell is, uh, yeah, I'd say less pleasant than what I'm accustomed to. So here we are, the coffee has been made. The smell is, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's not as sweet. This is one of the things about uh, Robusta kind of for a coffee. It's, it's not as sweet, it's more bitter, less sugars to it. Fun facts about Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam is actually the world's second largest producer of coffee after the enormous powerhouse that is Brazil. Uh, they are the world's largest producer of Robusta coffee. So Robusta coffee somewhat comes hand in hand with Vietnamese coffee. Uh, if you travel to Vietnam, uh, the traditional style of Vietnamese coffee is that it is served with sweetened condensed milk. Uh, so if it's a little extra bitter, it's, it, it's gonna be offset by that anyway. So it's actually a very nice combination, sweetened condensed milk and coffee. Um, but you know, you're not tasting the beans as much. Maybe that tradition has to do with what the, uh, the natural flavor of these beans are. Yep, <laughs> it tastes like how it smells. Yeah, there's kind of a natural sweetness 
that you get with Arabica coffee, you know, with um, some quality beans. And there's just none of that. It's like all this sugar has just been sucked out of it. The natural, you know, coffee sugar. Yeah, it's not awful, but... I can see why people prefer Arabica when they're drinking uh, raw coffee. Though, and notably, um, Robusta coffee does get added to blends, especially apparently in, in Italy. They'll make it, uh, their espresso blend will have uh, a bit more Robusta in it. So it's interesting that they do that. I think it's to, to spike up the bitterness a little bit to, uh, to get the, the flavor a little more around it. I wouldn't call it rubbery. People have said it's like kind of rubbery, but no. Rubbery or woody. No, it's just, it just tastes like coffee with the sugar missing. Okay, maybe, maybe it's like kind of a little rubbery, like intermittent taste. Yeah, okay, there, there's an aftertaste. Yeah, now I'm tasting it. I, I guess we're learning why Robusta Canafora beans are kind of more allocated. You, you see it a lot with like instant coffee. Uh, so instant coffee is just, I guess, coffee that's been brewed and then dehydrated. And uh, there they use the Robusta coffee more often because it's just it's a lot cheaper because it's a higher yield. And if you're getting some kind of you know, cheaper coffee like Maxwell House or something, they'll have like a blend which will be a mix of Arabica and uh, Robusta. And the Robusta is uh, there as a filler basically to make the um, to make the product cheaper to source. I actually did a little bit of grocery store shelf research after this, and I think that Robusta coffee is so maligned that these cheap coffee companies won't even admit to using Robusta in their coffee. Like they're kind of higher quality end, they'll brag how it's 100% Arabica coffee, but then they're kind of other blends, they'll just say it's 100% coffee, which is true but they're not going out of their way to mention that there is Robusta or Canafora coffee in that blend. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, and certainly if I added some sweetened condensed milk and drank it Vietnamese style, uh, it would be a lot more palatable. But the sense I'm getting with this stuff is that it's not really meant to be, not really meant to be drunk on its own. It tastes much more like you're drinking a plant than drinking coffee. Which it is a plant, but like usually coffee's got some natural sweetness to it. This this does not. <laughs> Robusta coffee, Canafora coffee, uh, straight out of Vietnam, uh, made by roasted by these guys. Um, yeah, I can see why it has the reputation that it does, and yeah, not not super not super happy about sort of the overall taste of it. But you know, it is an interesting thing to try. So this is a repeat cameo appearance from my roommate Juan, who is trying the Robusta coffee. Tastes like cherry. It's not, really it's not that bad, really, but it tastes like cherry. It tastes like pour of no. It tastes like the coffee from Starbucks, but not that burned. Like, it's not burned as they do it in the Starbucks. It's like that dirt shape feeling. Like, it was grown on the ground, but on the floor. <laughs> Of the forest, not on the top of the tree. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think that's an accurate description. Yeah. It does taste sound like dirt. It's not like, it's not terrible. It's just like it has no. some of the sweetness. It's like, no. It's like chewing dirt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, twice as strong in caffeine and lower in acidity, but it's it's bitter. It's so bitter. It's like dirt. Holy shit. It's incredible that you can have something like this. Dirt. Yeah. So there you have it. That's uh, two people's uh, independent interpretations of what the Robusta coffee tastes like. This is dirt. 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 You got all this. So I've got plenty of this coffee left to go. Yesterday I put it through my mocha pot with out of filter on it and it tasted like dirt. And what's interesting is that putting it through a mocha pot, it produced some of the similar, the familiar textures of mocha pot coffee. 
little tiny fines that got through without the filter being there, got through again and again. They sort of, the, the flavor just kind of overburnt, overbrewed on those. So I put the AeroPress filter in today. We'll see what that's gonna do. It improves it. Still tastes like dirt. <laughs> So I've gone to the supermarket and picked up some sweet condensed milk. This is more traditional Vietnamese style. Unfortunately in uh, America, it only seems to come in these cans, which are annoying to pour. I saw the, uh, the woman who I believe is the founder of the, the Wen Coffee Roaster Company. She had a little squirt bottle. That'd be a lot more convenient. So there's just kind of like a drop of the sweet condensed milk. And now you have coffee kind of more in the Vietnamese style. And now it's, of course, very palatable. Yeah, that is exactly what it tastes like. I've added sweetened condensed milk to my regular Arabica coffee, and instead it just comes out tasting like a bit oversweet and not like what I've tasted in Vietnam. This is what it tastes like. It's got the sweetness, uh, but it's also got that extra bitterness of the robusta. Yeah, so. Mysteries of life solved. This is why Vietnamese coffee is traditionally served with sweetened condensed milk in it. Here's Robusta on the AeroPress. Most dirt like so far. This is Robusta coffee on the V64 over. Or over dirt. So as you can see, I'm not really selling the Robusta coffee very well. So again, we'll enhance it Vietnamese style. So I felt that I needed to be a bit more fair to it, given that I was arriving from an outside culture uh, and not fully immersed in the cultural context of the consuming of Robusta coffee. So I did reach out to the Nguyen Coffee Supply, uh, sent them a message on Facebook, and I asked them, I told them basically what the video said, uh, that I didn't particularly like their Robusta beans, their True Grit, uh, and that it, it basically tasted like dirt. Uh, and did they want to add any uh, sort of more cultural context uh, to the coffee so that um, I wasn't kind of doing kind of a weird imperialistic thing about it. Uh, and they did reply, they said, hi, uh, thank you for sharing this. Everyone's experiences are subjective, so we're sorry to hear that you didn't enjoy it. You can check out our website for guides and blog posts on Robusta for additional context. Just search Robusta. So I did do that, and those are the bits of text that I have been interspersing throughout this video where I'm kind of defending the Robusta uh, and giving a bit more context to where it's coming from. Uh, it says things like, while there are many black coffee drinkers in the world, some coffees do better and are actually supposed to be consumed with additions such as milk or sweetener. Café Suède, I'm attempting the pronunciation here, is a prime example of that. Iced Vietnamese coffee with condensed milk is a staple that can be found on virtually every street in Vietnam, and for good reason, it tastes great and gets you going. So there is that added piece of the context. Uh, and the fact that really this is supposed to be enjoyed with sweetened condensed milk. And if you've ever been to Vietnam or gone to a coffee shop that talks about a Vietnamese style, or I've seen one coffee shop called Ice Tanoi, uh, you have tried it and you know that it does taste good, that it is a nice mix of things. And one more added caveat is that I am not an expert Robusta drinker. This is the very first Robusta I've ever had, so I have no reference for comparison of what a very good Robusta is compared to like a really crappy Robusta. So bear that in mind as you judge Robusta. By the way, if you are interested in knowing more about Vietnam, what it's like to live there, uh, I have a friend who's a travel blogger and she spent two years backpacking around Southeast Asia, including uh, six months renting an apartment in Vietnam. She's got a 20 video series on uh, living, traveling through Vietnam, uh, and something like 100 videos in Southeast Asia. I'll include a link to her right here. So thanks for watching. Tuesday Coffee Snobby.